So if you're thinking of applying to the program, I think it's very important to think about population level interventions. So things we can change across the whole population or in particular communities. So for example, that might be looking at the power of price, so where products are sold, uh, how they're promoted, uh, those types of changes. We're also particularly interested in complex interventions. So things that have lots of different mechanisms that can achieve change. So that might be working at multiple levels. So it might be the household, the family, the community, um, a particular setting, uh, you know, particular voluntary sector organizations or others, and also with particular age groups. So capturing that complexity in an application is really important and thinking at the population level. Studies that have looked at minimum alcohol unit pricing, We've looked at changes, for example, that have been introduced into the prison system or trying to deal with bullying in the school setting. These are all really complex issues. They try to address health priorities for populations and they're the kinds of applications that are very exciting. We re recommend for funding a broad range of evaluation designs which are constructed around a broad range of different types of interventions. So that will always include randomised controlled trials of individually allocated interventions or interventions that are delivered via kind of de defined clusters like schools. I know studies are important, but it's not just about randomised controlled trials where we're evaluating interventions that occur at kind of higher levels, things like policy initiatives. We do need to be using more kind of creative designs, things like interrupted time series analysis designs, designs based on kind of modelling studies. So th th there's a broad array of kind of natural experimental evaluation designs that we, we increasingly see people using. And the best applications tend to start with the intervention and construct a research de design around that, rather than starting with a research design and constructing an intervention to fit, fit within that. I'd also say good applications to the funding board often tend to see implementation science as not just being the bit that comes at the end of the study when you know whether or not something works, actually good applications tend to have an eye on whether something is likely to be something that has the potential to be taken up by policy and practice and to make an impact on policy and practice from the very outset so building in understandings of implementation throughout the development and evaluation of complex interventions. Um, in, terms of, in terms of top tips for the health economics particularly in a public health context we're interested in the consideration of perspective. So it's really important in public health that um, applicants go beyond the classic narrow perspective of health services only. It's likely that uh, public health interventions will have multi-sector Im impacts. Oh, There's going to be lots of costs occurring, but the, the, the long-term outcomes will be across multiple sectors. So for example, impacts um, Interventions in education, for example, might have long-term health benefits, educational attainment benefits, there may be knock-on effects to employment and so on. So I think perspective really matters and often what we see is that economists on the applications will take on um, they'll take on a number of perspectives for their, to report and present their economic analyses. So not just a health and personal social, social services perspective, but a broader societal perspective is, is often very useful, even if the applicants do that within a sensitivity analysis. And the guidance that we have from NICE around how to conduct economic evaluations and public health interventions does give us a clear steer to the frameworks that uh, we use. So going beyond cost-effectiveness analyses and into broader cost-benefit and cost consequence analysis is very clearly outlined by NICE that, that, that that's, that's a recommended approach. Time horizon is very important. So a lot of public health interventions require upfront cost to, to invest in, in often what are quite preventive interventions. Um, but what we'll see is that a lot of the outcomes and the benefits in terms of health and these multi-sectoral impacts, but also in terms of cost savings, for example, they will often arise in the future. So consideration of the appropriate time horizon um, is very important. As I said, you know, if, if we just consider a short term within trial economic evaluation, we're likely to be missing long term cost savings and, and outcomes across these sectors. One of the, the bits of advice I'd give to applicants on, based on my experience on the board is to take the plain English summary seriously. Uh, I think there's a number of reasons for that. One is that it's the initial view you get of the application.
And as a public contributor, that's the bit I read first. But I've heard a lot of other people on the board saying that they also read it first, particularly if it's not in an area of their expertise. So that's where you get your impression across. But also, if you can't explain what you're trying to do clearly and simply, uh, then it weakens the whole application. And the things I look for in a plain English summary are that it should be simple, simple language. I think a 12-year-old should, I mean, that's the normal standard that a 12-year-old should be able to understand it. It should be clear, which isn't necessarily the same thing, that you, you can follow what's being said quite easily, and it should be comprehensive in the sense that it should give you a good idea what the research is about. So I'd, I'd, I'd say in terms of the public contributor's role, certainly on, on the funding board, is that uh, we look at the whole of the application, but we'll perhaps look at it differently from the academic members of the board. Obviously, we're not going to be looking at the statistical detail. We're trying to see it as a whole, more from a common sense point of view. So is what's the problem that's being addressed? Is it a real problem? What's the nature of the intervention? Is it properly explained? And is it justified? Why are you trying to research this particular intervention compared to any of a range of others that might be available? Is that justified? And the last thing would be about impact. And so what's the dissemination like? Um, and then what's that likely to lead to in terms of impact, uh, in terms of policy changes or, or any other changes? Um, and so is the investment you're making in that research going to provide value for money in terms of, of what effect it has in the real world in the long term by the time that research finishes? And sometimes if you're starting with a feasibility study and then going on to say a full randomised controlled tr trial, I mean that might be six or seven years ago, so what will the world be like at that point and is this going to be useful? Okay, so for evidence synthesis, I suppose I've got three tips. One is to focus very clearly on a narrow, specific question um, in terms of the intervention. Make sure you're not lumping disparate interventions together so that you've got a clear analytical focus. Number two is just to do a proper systematic review. So, you know, there's a right way to do a systematic review. So read lots of existing Cochrane and other systematic reviews and just make sure you do all the things you're supposed to do, you know, quality appraisal, systematic searches. It's all kind of in the, in the literature and relatively easy to find out. And the third tip I'd say is um, don't just focus on questions of effectiveness. Um, systematic review should say what works for whom under what conditions. So as well as synthesising randomised controlled trials or whatever outcome evaluations you're looking at, also in order to look at effectiveness, also synthesise theories of change to try and have a starting point for how the intervention is meant to work and also synthesise process evaluation to find out what factors affect good and bad implementation of these sorts of interventions. And that way you're just delivering something which will be a bit more useful to practitioners um, and policy makers in thinking about where these sorts of inter interventions have legs and where they don't have legs. I'd like to give you a little bit of advice about making applications to our board. Four simple things to remember, to bear in mind when you make your application. First one is um, focus your question on a real world problem. Second one is uh, make sure you've got the right expertise on your team to help solve that problem. Thirdly, Consider a full range of designs for your study. RCTs may not be appropriate, and we're very willing to consider other designs. And fourthly, we would like you to consider taking a population approach and moving away from individual level interventions to consider a population approach. So good, look, good luck in your applications.